outrage that the two people who, the two Republicans who refused to certify the election, they got an earful. And I'm just wondering, in the fallout from the local people, when they report back to us either later tonight or tomorrow, how much of an influence did those, act, those citizens, it was just regular, everyday citizens, how much of an influence did they have on those two um, electors there? Look, I love that all politics is local. And I think people should and must put pressure on the people they put in power. What if it hadn't been for those Michiganders and Detroiters who decided to yell at these people? It is all local, but imagine those local folks having the influence. They, had, they could have had a very big influence on a national election, on who was yeah. president of the United States, how, how history is going to look back on this. And I think a lot of people are going to be embarrassed o over time when they look back and say, how did I do that? How did I fall for that? What happened to me? What was I thinking in that time? Unfreaking believable. You can guarantee that at no point during this scripted gaslighting segment did Don Levin ever at once consider for a millisecond that he could be talking about himself. This latest gaslighting segment from DNC TV focused on two Republicans, Monica Palmer and William Hartman, who had not voted to certify the election for Joe Biden due to voting irregularities that they wanted to see investigated. But as we all know, like I talk about on this channel all the time, the only legitimate voting irregularities Regularities would be those that are against the Democrats. And so we have to pretend like this election was perfection. It's like, as long as Democrats winning, the all clear is given. There was no election fraud. There was no foreign interference. No, 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 no. That's only if Republicans win. I mean, damn, it's almost like somebody's been predicting that for the last few years. So Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo and the media at large, in fact, are spinning this story as a group of community citizens coming together to convince these two Republicans using American values and good arguments to look the other way when it came to the voting array regularities and just confirm it for Biden, which really leaves one wondering what convincing arguments did these community citizens come up with to convince these Republicans. And what that tells us is you, Miss Monica Palmer from Gross Point Woods, which has a history of racism, are deciding to enable and continue to perpetuate the racist history of this country. And I want you to think about what that means for your kids probably go to Gross Point North. ...are a disgrace as it relates to the ability to have a free and impartial election in this nation. You have dishonored the legacy of veterans, the legacy of seniors. Just know when you try to sleep tonight that millions of people around the world now on Twitter know the name Monica Palmer and William Hartman as two people completely racist, and without an understanding of what integrity means or a shred of human decency. That's right. Just get in a big hearty whiff of those American values. The time-honored American tradition of threatening people's children and their livelihoods unless they vote the way you want them to. Do what we want or we'll call you a witch, or I mean racist. I particularly love all these claims that not certifying the election, which still had plenty of voting irregularities that should be investigated, is tantamount to being against civil rights and being a racist because they say Trump is a racist. Meanwhile, back in reality, Trump achieved justice and prison reform unlike Barack Obama and Joe Biden. Trump funded black colleges for the foreseeable future. President Trump set a record in this election by attracting the highest percentage of non-white vote of any Republican presidential candidate in the last 60 years at 12% of black Americans. Based on these facts, if Trump is a racist, he's doing it wrong. Anyway, I wanna get back to the clip where Don Lemon starts lecturing Trump supporters that if they don't fall into line, their grandchildren are gonna hate them and they will be on the wrong side of history how how history is going to look back on this and i think a lot of people are going to be embarrassed o over time when they look back and say how did i do that how did i fall for that what happened to me what was i thinking in that time you want to you know whatever it is you have what do they call it uh, liberal tears you may want all of that but your grandchildren and your kids will look back and say "Ooh, what did grandpa did what did it do what did what did dad do what did mom do uh, in this moment and and realize that you were on the wrong side of history <laughs> i see these people as having no shame in their game yeah well None. um it doesn't you'll be surprised what happens to people as they get older and um sadly when they're on their deathbeds <laughs> 
guys. We're supposed to believe that they're on the right side of history? The guys who said that protests aren't supposed to be peaceful? The guys who promoted and incited Antifa extremists to attack ICE facilities? Well, I'll give them this. History is in fact written by the victor and they clearly see themselves as the victor. I can't deny it. They control all the flows of information and they're locking it down tighter on a daily basis. Look, it seems really bad right now, and it is, but we have to keep this fight up or we risk being snuffed out with no good ability to challenge this DNC establishment media complex. You can support me in this fight by using one of the links listed in the description or pinned comment. As always, thanks for watching. Keep coming back.